What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? Today we're looking at another D Marble video where he's very curious about gravity, and apparently there's a mysterious force out there fighting gravity. So D Marble is gonna let us know like his contentions surrounding gravity and basically why he doesn't actually accept gravity. So we're gonna be taking a look at those today. Uh, if you like this kind of dumb fucking flurf shit, then please stay tuned. Okay, so this very first part here is coming from an old show. I don't know if it's like, oh, what Little House on the Prairie or something like that. I don't know. It kind of looks like that era and that type of show. So now QD Marble. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about that phrase, that phrase that we get so often. You know, if it weren't for gravity, we'd all go flying off into space. As ridiculous as that sounds, there are still adults, supposedly rational thinking adults that still say that exact same thing. So, yes, rational thinking adults say that gravity actually exists. Uh, on the other hand, you're not a rational adult, so you don't think it exists. The situation is that we've all been subjected to an extensive propaganda campaign that has resulted in people operating with total disregard for their own God-given senses. Senses are not God-given. And no, it's not a propaganda campaign. Normal people call that education. That's what he's complaining about now. People get educated and they understand how gravity works and the fact that it's real. And that pisses him off. This is a common thing with flat earthers. Uh, they get pissed off by just, you know, basic science. And this has led people to believe in ideologies that go completely against common sense and rational thought. When individuals express their knowledge that they live on a flat, stationary plane, one of the most popular responses we get is in the form of gravity. So you claim that you have knowledge of the flat earth, but you see knowledge kind of implies that you at least have some kind of evidence to back up this knowledge. But I, I have found all flurfer evidence to not actually be evidence. It's a lot like the evidence for God. While true, you're presenting it as evidence. It's not actually evidence because it doesn't actually prove your point. And gravity is used to explain away everything that makes absolutely no sense in relation to your day-to-day -day experience. That's, it's the glue that holds this whole thing together. No, gravity is not the glue that holds everything together. There's a multitude of working gears in the machine that you could call reality. So to single out one particular principle of reality and say that that is the glue that holds everything together is very disingenuous. So we were all programmed to believe in gravity and we're told to respond by explaining gravity and saying that gravity is this amazing force on Earth that pulls everything towards the center of mass from all directions. And by all of this, he means that people are just taught. We're not programmed. We're just taught about gravity, how it operates. All the principles used to explain gravity and how it works actually work out and actually uh, give us a working model of reality. So really, it's only you that seems like the irrational one at this point. This infers that when people say that, that believe in a globe, that there exist people thousands of miles beneath your feet who are walking, driving, riding bikes, flying airplanes, finding love and loss, experiencing tragedy and hope, all while living their entire existence upside down relative to their position. So this is just a poor attempt at, at an appeal to emotion fallacy here, because he's tried to appeal to your emotions by saying they're finding love and loss and all that. None of that actually matters when you're concerned with the shape of the earth. Now, what he's actually doing here is taking a reference frame and applying it to a different place on earth than the reference frame is applicable to. So basically, my reference frame from where I am in North Alabama, he wants to use that reference frame on the other side of the globe directly like opposite to me in a three-dimensional space. The problem with that is, is that my reference frame is only going to work for me because of the subjectivity of like up, down, left, right, all of that. Now he's speaking of this reference frame from a completely different reference frame that's outside of the Earth uh, system. I mean, he's really being disingenuous here. He's confusing like people with what he's trying to talk about. And when people say that, I don't believe that they're really thinking that deeply about what they're saying. 
Wait a second. You're telling me I'm the one that's not thinking deeply? Whew. Honey, he needs to turn his self-awareness up a little bit. And what you're seeing here is a visual demonstration of just that. I know, it looks silly. What the fuck? Honey, he's got a video of him standing next to his van, and he's flipped it 180 degrees to where it looks like he's standing upside down. Yes, honey, it is stupid. He thinks that he's proven that it's ridiculous to believe that we live on a globe Earth, when in actuality, all he's proven is that he knows how to flip video in his editor and he doesn't know how gravity works or how reference frames work or how anything in physics really works. That's probably because he thinks that it's all like, you know, programming and propaganda and shit. You know, basic education. But we globe skeptics or flat earthers, we're not the ones that believe that this nonsense actually matches up with reality just because that's what we're told. Um, except that it does when you apply the correct reference frame. So thanks for playing. If you believe that gravity is strong enough to be pulling everything towards the center of mass and let's go ahead and take a look at this example. So gravity is dependent upon the two masses in which you are measuring the force of gravity between. So like between that van and the earth, you're going to have a, a much greater force of gravity that's holding that onto the earth than would be you know, demarble standing next to it. But it's very dependent on the mass of the object that you're measuring. Uh, the mass of the one object and the mass of the other object. Also, the distance between the center of the Earth and that object. That's why I like to use the whole example of weighing yourself at the bottom of a mountain and then weighing yourself at the very top of a mountain. Now, going up so far, you're only going to be able to really detect like two hundredths of a pound difference, but it's still a difference that directly maps to our force of gravity equation. So what he has to do, and he's not going to do, is prove how that equation fails at some point in reality. And the fact is, is that he actually can't. A person can be standing next to a 4,000 pound vehicle and step outside said vehicle and stand next to a helium balloon while that balloon is attempting to float upward to the sky that is relatively beneath someone else's feet. So the weight and the buoyancy of all of these three things that he's got on the screen here are due to gravity. So I don't know what he's hoping to prove here when he's showing us an example of gravity. He's mentioning examples of gravity and he's showing us how buoyancy works, even though he doesn't know that gravity is an integral part of the buoyant force. Whew. People believe that gravity is strong enough to hold this 4,000 pound van to the ground because that's what you're seeing right here. The gravitational pull is supposedly holding the van on, on the concrete, keeping it from flying off into space. The fact that you said that it's 4,000 pounds gives you the indication that yes, gravity is strong enough because gravity depends on the mass of the two objects that you're measuring the force of gravity between. And then you're gonna have these so-called experts on the internet who would shrug that off and offer up word salad, pseudo-scientific jargon, word trickery. Wait, honey, who's using word trickery? Is it me or is it him? Because he doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. Nobody knows what the fuck he's talking about. So it's not me that's confusing people. It's not me that's using pseudoscience. The fact that you don't think that gravity plays a significant role in measuring the weight of something or the buoyancy of something indicates to me that you're using pseudoscience. To confuse people using terms like selective gravity to explain away these things that have no relation to reality. The fuck is selective gravity? Now let's address this logical fallacy of gravity's what's keeping us all from flying off into space and add a little question in there. Now those of us who actually trust in our senses to interpret reality and have grown a skepticism for the globe model and we find it easier to conclude that gravity is a non-existent force and that we all, meaning everyone existing on Earth, all of us, we experience life on a flat, motionless plane. Uh, well, true, from your own perspective, it does seem to be flat. I can assure you it's not. If it were flat, many uh, things would be different. Like with Eratosthenes, you would have different shadows. Uh, also, I know that you can make the, sh the sun fit given a certain height with the shadows in Eratosthenes' original experiment, but the more data points that you collect on that particular experiment, you will see how the shadows do not follow a linear uh, sort of growth uh, on the on the Earth. It actually has uh, more of a 
uh, curve kind of distribution. A lot of things would be different if the Earth were actually flat. You don't have any evidence of this. You just say it. You lazily just say that gravity doesn't exist. And it's the exact same thing with all the rest of your shit. We all walk around upright at a 90 degree angle on this vast flat plane. Nah, my uncle, he walks around at a 35 degree angle. Just like we all experience every day of our lives. Our day-to-day -day experience is us living on a flat, motionless plane. None of us have ever seen anybody upside down. That makes absolutely no sense. It makes no sense to you because you don't understand basic science and you label basic science as propaganda or programming. That's why it doesn't make sense to you because you just outright reject it with no reason at all other than you distrust the government, which I guess I can understand distrusting the government, but when independent educational institutions tell you these things, you still reject it because of the government. You just, you just don't make sense, bro. But if gravity is the force that is keeping us all from flying off into space, then this would mean that there's some force, some repellent force that's either pushing everything away from the surface of the Earth, or that there's some force that's external to the Earth that's pulling everything away from the surface of the Earth in all directions, relatively. Uh, well, there's nothing pulling us away from the Earth, but there is sort of this imaginary force called the centrifugal force that's caused by the Earth rotating. And I say that it's imaginary force because it's not actually a force necessarily. Your relative position here on the face of the Earth is a product of the forces acting upon you. So for one thing, you have Earth's gravity, which acts on, which acts on you uh, with a very specific amount of force. Not 9.8 meters per second squared is the acceleration. Now the centrifugal force pushes out by way, way less, like the gravitational force of the Earth far exceeds the centrifugal force that we feel. So that's why we stay on the Earth, and that's what this teacher is actually talking about. But you want to make it out to be like it's some mysterious force out in the universe. Ooh, that is pulling us off the Earth, and that's not what happens. This would mean that there is some force that gravity is constantly in this eternal struggle with. Yeah, the centrifugal force, at least here on Earth. Out in the universe, I mean, it's really just gravity against gravity. One thing's gravity, gravitational effect, has an effect on other things' gravitational effects or their position uh, in the in the universe. So, I mean, y you have to think about the reference frame that you're that you're in. So, right now, uh, centrifugal force and gravity are kind of, are the things going in opposite direction. But then again. I mean, you don't understand basic science, so... Well, as far as we know, there's no repulsive force pushing everything away from the Earth. In fact, we've been taught that the Earth has a magnetic core. Although it's been demonstrated that magnetic properties are lost when a metal reaches a certain temperature, but I suppose that's for another video. I would love to tear you up about how our core is made out of iron and that it runs at a temperature of about 5,700 degrees Celsius. Now, due to the crushing pressure of gravity at the center of the Earth, it actually prevents this iron core from becoming a liquid and remains a solid. Now, in the outer core, what you have is varying layers of different metals, and these metals are rotating around with the Earth's rotation. This, in turn, creates an electrical current, which creates our magnetic field. So it's not that the core is magnetic, it's that the core creates an electrical current because of the spinning liquid metal at the center of the Earth that then creates the magnetic field. And as far as the external force pulling things off the Earth, uh, that gravity is supposed to be constantly fighting against, well, some people would say that's the vacuum of space and, you know, attribute all that to you know, this, this infinite vacuum of space. So I believe the actual question that Dean Marble is trying to ask here is, why don't we just float off of the Earth? And the basic answer for that is gravity. Because even if the Earth was still, like not moving, uh, not rotating, and there was no gravity, there would be nothing to hold us onto the Earth. So we would essentially float off into space or whatever. That's the actual question that he's asking here, but he wants to make it out to be more magical than it actually is. Uh, I think explaining the centrifugal force to him, or even the centripetal force, 
would be way too over his head, and he would just consider it to be scientific nonsense programming propaganda. But it's been demonstrated and it's been discussed at length by uh, other content creators that the idea of an enclosed system existing next to a vacuum without a physical membrane or a barrier between the two, that's a physical impossibility. What he's making reference here is to the Fleur first claim that the second law of thermodynamics disproves that the Earth exists next to a vacuum, being space. When in actuality, their understanding of the second law of thermodynamics is flawed because they do not uh, factor in the effect of gravity in this situation. If you actually use the GLOW model and you factor in gravity, it is easy to see how the Earth can retain an atmosphere because of gravity. But it's essential for their particular model or their particular presentation to say that it's impossible for the earth to uh, the earth's atmosphere to exist next to a vacuum even though vacuums don't actually suck but good luck trying to tell them that so to summarize if you believe that gravity is the force that keeps us off from flying off into space then that means that there has to be some force that gravity is perpetually counteracting that's either pushing us away from the surface of the earth or that's pulling us out into space off of the face of the earth so the question is what is that force that gravity is constantly battling against well there's two answers to this like i've said this entire time and this is kind of a summary of the video the one answer to his question is the centrifugal force uh, it is uh, a, an imaginary force that is pushing us off of the earth but gravity is much greater and counteracts the centri uh, centrifugal force the other answer to his question is that gravity is what holds us onto the earth because mass attracts mass we are held against the earth by gravity if gravity wasn't here we would most definitely fly off of the earth regardless of whether or not it rotates thank you heathens for stopping by and watching me rant against d marvel here if you will please go down below and uh leave me a comment with what you thought about his bullshit it would help me out greatly if you smash that like button shared this out and subscribed if you like this kind of dumb shit don't forget to stand up and use your voice and I will see you heathens later.